This is Super Yacht News with Yves Sisman. Hi, welcome back to the channel. Okay, so we're starting with some breaking news actually, and this is out of the uh, V&A waterfront in Cape Town in South Africa. Uh, as you can see from the photograph here, uh, a 112-year-old tall ship called the Bark Europa fell over on its side, toppled over, similar to what we saw in Scotland recently. Uh, the vessel toppled over whilst it was in dry dock. Now, the vessel was being prepared to be put back in the water when the incident happened. Um, according to reports, one of the crew was injured in the accident. Uh, the rest of the crew have been evacuated from the vessel. The vessel was in a maintenance period and it was due, like I said, it was due to go back into the water. Now, there's no, obviously, there's no reason this happened today on Saturday morning. Uh, so there's no reason yet as be, has been given as to what happened, but it's far too early for anything like that to really be known. I'm sure there will be a full investigation into what has happened. Now, if you are in the area, in the, if you live near the v &A waterfront, please be sure to get down there. We don't have any video footage of it right now. We just have this one single photograph. Uh, if you can, uh, if you if you live in the area, please go down and um, and send us what you have. You maybe already have some footage of it from earlier today because it was reported that there were lots of people uh, taking photos and uh, you know and looking in that general direction. Now the vessel was built in 1911 uh, in the Stuck Stuckland Wharf in Hamburg, Germany. I don't. I've probably butchered the pronunciation. I'll put the name on the screen so you you can see it. Uh, it's a 56 meter uh, vessel. Uh, so yeah, so that's it. We just started with that story. Um, it, like I said, it's just come in, so it was just before we were about to film, so we're very uh, low on details. All right, so we'll move on to our next story, and this is about uh, the Monaco Grand Prix uh, in relation to the super yachts. Obviously, the the Grand Prix goes right through the marina there. Up until recently, the um, Monaco Grand Prix, which is one of the original Grand Prix going back to the 1950s, there was some sort of, uh, there was, it was unknown whether they were going to continue with the Grand Prix because the new company that took over, they, they're asking for so much money, they weren't making enough. It's the same thing happened the British Grand Prix recently. So what is happening, and this comes back to how it relates to super yachts, uh, what they're going to do is they're going to start charging people on super yachts who watch the race. Now, up until this year, it wasn't required to like if you were on a yacht in the marina and you were watching from the yacht you didn't need a ticket to go to the event but what they're going to do now is they're going to say that every yacht that's in the marina I and mean, don't, don't forget the, the yachts are already paying to be in the marina for that event but they're going to they're saying now that everybody on board that yacht has to have a ticket and the tickets are going to be between 211 euros and 300 euros each depending on which part of the marina the yacht will be in that includes the crew as well but the crew apparently are going to be given their tickets they're going to need a ticket but they're going to get one for free but all of the people who are on board those vessels are going to need a ticket as well so that's going to uh, it's going to create millions of millions of euros more revenue than they were previously getting it's going to make it considerably more expensive for the people on those yachts to watch now i know what you're thinking they're all rich so it doesn't matter but in actual fact, uh, a lot of people charter those boats and will pay and go and, to go and be on board one of the yachts to watch the race from. It's a little bit more expensive than just going to the race, of course. But now they'll have to stump up the 300 euros as well. Uh, like I said, in, in the past, they only needed a ticket if they left the yacht during the race. Uh, but now they'll need one to be on the yacht as well. All right, so we'll move on to our next story now. And actually, this is a report that was a that we've already published on the Super Yacht News channel. We're going to put a segment of that report on here, and it's about um, what will happen to the seas super yachts. Now, at the beginning of the war in Ukraine, when they started to seize the yachts, what they said the plan was is that they were going to seize the yachts, they were going to sell them, and then they were going to give the money to Ukraine to help towards the war effort slash rebuilding. But that currently isn't happening and um, we, we did a report in San Remo recently where one of the vessels is currently moored so we'll go to that report now all right so if we go all the way back to March um, the first two vessels that were arrested by uh, the Italians were Lady M in Imperia 
and Lena in San Remo. And this is Motiot Lena here. It's a 38 meter San Lorenzo and it's owned by a Russian named Gennady Timchenko who uh, is, has close ties to Putin and that's why they've both been arrested. Just before the vessel was arrested, it was in Turkey, in, in Marmaris in Turkey. It arrived in Turkey in 7th of March and then it left and came here and then was arrested. Now that obviously, obviously that was before all of the other Russian vessels went to Turkey when they realized that they could go there unmolested. But it just, I just find it kind of ironic that this boat was in Turkey at the beginning, came here, got arrested, and then uh, and it's been here ever since. In the Italian press, it says that this vessel was arrested and was to be confiscated at a later date, but I don't think that's happening with any of the Italian boats. I think this boat and Lady M and Shahar Assad and uh, Sailing Yacht A, I think they're just waiting to give those boats back. I think what's going to happen is they're going to say to the, the owner of these boats, this is how much you owe for mooring fees and for the money that, that the government has had to pay to keep, to keep these in good condition. And now uh, you can pay that to us and then we'll give you your boat back. I think that's what's going to happen. I don't think any boats are going to be confiscated. All right, so we'll move on to our next story. And this is about a fire that happened, uh, I think it was on the 5th of May, 15th of May, uh, at a shipyard in uh, in Turkey. Now this shipyard is called the Daemon Shipyard. It's actually, it's a shipyard that is, belongs to Daemon. And Daemon make the uh, support vessels. Uh, they are well known for the support vessels. In fact, the, the support vessel that Jeff Bezos had built, that was built by Daemon Yachting. Now, there were no injuries in that fire. And they said that the Damon Yachting um, put out a statement and they said that that was due to fast evacuation of the building and good response by the firefighters. Um, and they also said that, that there are a couple, I think there are two or three new builds currently being built at that facility. But Damon Yachting said that no projects currently in build were affected by the fire that broke out at the facility. Uh, the construction hall in the Antalya Free Zone in Turkey. This is what it's called. Um, and it says the hall is owned by Damon Shipyards and was substantially damaged in the blaze. So that was uh, reported on social media recently. Uh, so we just wanted to update you on that story now. All right, so we'll move on to our next story. This is our final story, in fact. And this is uh, information that's just coming out about Alpha Nero. You know the story of Alfa Nero. This vessel has been seized by the Antiguan government and they are planning to sell the vessel as soon as they can. Now, uh, what the problem is, is the vessel has been sanctioned. It's part of a, 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 raft, a raft of sanctions against the believed owner, Andrei Guryev. His, he's denied that he owns it, but that it's still got sanctions against it by the US government. Now, since uh, the Antiguan government have seized the vessel, they've reflagged it. And that's actually just showing up on AIS as an update. It's actually showing the Antigua and Barbuda flag. And um, the government has said that they're going to apply for licenses with the US government to be able to sell the vessel while it's still under sanctions. The 18th of May, US Department of the Treasury issued license to the government of Antigua and Barbuda authorizing persons licensed by the US Treasury to participate in the government of Antigua and Barbuda auction of the vessel of Motia Alfa Nero. And what does that mean exactly? It means that the US government is giving licenses to specific vetted bidders so they can bid on this vessel. So for instance, if an American citizen wanted to bid, they get a license, they can bid on the ship if they win it, then they can then it becomes theirs even whilst the vessel is still under sanctions it also says the statement says it it also authorizes transactions that include but are not limited to bidding on the purchase of the vessel paying deposits and providing financing insurance or funding in connection with the purchase uh, so that's kind of good news for the vessel uh, that the, the people will be allowed to bid on it so they'll have to be pre-vetted by the US government. The US government will have to be satisfied that it's not going to end up back with the previous owner. Uh, now, what they have said that the ambassador to the US, uh, Sanders, he says that there are some other issues, such as the fact that the vessel is still got the sanctions against it. And that's going to be more complicated to, um, to remove. Uh, but they are confident that it will happen at some point in the future. 
but there's no data on that yet. So it's going to be complicated if somebody buys it while it's still sanctioned. It's going to be more complicated than it would be if the sanctions have been removed. I think this is probably a preferred, this is just my opinion now, but this is probably a preferred way to sell the vessel for the US government because it almost certainly ensures that nobody who could possibly buy it and then sell back to the um, previous owner will be able to bid on it. So they'll, I would imagine that they will probably keep it like this until the vessel sells. Anyway, we will update you on that story and any of the other stories when we have more information. Okay, one last thing before I go. Remember to check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash esisman. You'll find behind the scenes videos of how we made films, including the RV Petrol and Leith. Plus we just put on an extra video based on our trip to Monaco, uh, which was yesterday. So if you haven't seen that video, please be sure to check out the Monaco video that we put on the YouTube channel, but there is an extra video on the Patreon channel. You'll get early access to feature videos advert free, and you'll get to suggest topics for future videos and get to ask questions for upcoming patron only Q and A's. Also be sure to check out our new Super Yacht channel. It's Super Yacht News. It's at Super Yacht hyphen news. This is basically, these videos are all chopped up into single stories. So if you're not interested in watching a, a whole video, which can be, you know, 15 minutes long, you can go there and subscribe and you'll get notifications of each individual story. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching. Please be sure to like this video, super important for the algorithm. Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for future notifications. And like I said, thanks very much for watching and I'll catch up with you soon. Bye-bye.